afternoon friends uh, respected uh, uh, minister other distinguished guest the conference organizers have given me 15 12 minutes and the professors like me we normally measure time by 60 minutes or 90 minutes and particularly when you give a mic to us actually we are sometimes worse than ministers in terms of uh, taking time but uh, we will try to precisely mention an important point is what is the one which propels our economy everybody is telling our economy is growing our economy is growing so what is that which is the engine of our economic growth so we are going to argue the primary engine of our economic growth is the partnership proprietorship firms in the country what we call India and Inc. Not the India Inc. which you read about in newspaper daily. India Inc. contribution to GDP is, believe me, 12 to 15 percent only. 12 to 15 percent. India and Inc. is 50 percent. And before that, a good news I should tell you. In 1990, G7 had 52 percent of the global GDP. G7 countries. Most of us are aware of it. Now it has become G20. Because whenever you are in crisis, what do you do? You tend to call all others, come and sit with you. So G7 is in deep crisis. So they have expanded it to G20. You come and you know, sit with us. That's a standard practice. If you are doing well, you throw away everybody. You don't want others to be with you. Now the G7 today, their share in the global GDP is uh, something in the order of 35%. Well, as that of the emerging market is 51%. You can see that the whole axis has shifted. And uh, it is forecast G7 will have 20 to 22% only in the next 10 years. In other words, G7 is on a significant decline. It's not required for us to. And there are so many economic and social reasons for it. We will not go deep into that. What is primarily to be looked at is five countries which are for the coming 20 to 30 years. India, China, Brazil, Indonesia, and South Africa. These are the five countries which we need to concern about for the coming period. If you look at our own country, we find that something of the order of 5.8 crore enterprises are there in the country. Believe me, sir. 5.8 crore. All type of enterprises. Manufacturing, service sector. And they constitute 45% of the GDP. Well, as all our corporate, which we talk about on a daily basis, is only 15%. And these, in US, it is the reverse. Corporate is 85%, and the small uh, partnership, proprietorship is hardly 7-8%. But in India, it is this way. And 90% of the employment is generated by these non-corporate people. Government, as well as others, are of the order of 10% employment only. Now, this 45% in India, by experts, business papers, it is called residual. India is the only country where half of the economy is called residual. No other country, this, uh, this I call actually what I call the terminological terrorism. There is one type of terrorism that comes out of terminology. When we were, I'll tell you an example. We were growing at 4.5%, 3% annual growth rate. It was immediately told Hindu growth, growth rate of growth. If you grow at 3%, it is Hindu rate of growth. If you grow at 9%, nobody explains. <laughs> Who is growing? Hindus are same, number-wise another thing. But that time it was called Hindu rate of growth. That is another terminological terrorism. We are an emerging market. That is a terminological ter We are not an emerging market, sir. We are a re-emerging market. We were top of the world till 1820. So whenever anybody asks, tells you that we are an emerging market, 
you tell sorry i want to correct you we are re emerging market we are getting where we were already nothing new or anything so if you look at their their share in manufacturing is 50% and they are sometimes called you will be surprised unorganized near my house there is a vegetable vendor every day morning she comes at 7 o'clock in the early morning in her two wheeler she comes with all half a truck of vegetable she brings in a two wheeler i don't know how she does it she keeps her shop evening up to 8:39 she is there every day believe me day after day so i was as an economist financial expert i was looking at her and i was wondering where does she fit into our economy at all she should be part of our economy i inquired with a lot of senior experts nobody was clear where she fits in does she sell are you she sells vegetable it is factual it is not theory or anything and then i investigated i went into what is called our central statistical organization they have a you know but a but a book is there about our economy who is where and then lot of research i found out she comes under a category called unorganized sector she is much better organized than many big businesses <laughs> she knows the customer she knows the product she will tell me sometime sir this you won't like you come tomorrow she is called unorganized this is another terminological terrorism unorganized gives you an idea she is disorganized which she is not that created an interest for me to study this group actually it increased my blood pressure to start with the worst part i should share it with you in the same book by the national account statistics you go further after 10 pages government is called organized sector <laughs> how can government be called if at all it should be the other way right the totally disorganized uh, system is our government and that is called minister is here you he won't mind he knows me well he he knows this professor is cannot be controlled so he knows me well so you don't have to worry about it so what i want to say is we have to be careful in the terminology which is used once you call it unorganized it is sort of you know like you know waste disorganized something should be done same thing about another one fellow who sells idli fast food joint near my house he also opens at 7 closes at 10 he is called unorganized so this uh, terms are very very important and most of the terms are imported to us from the west they tell you how to look at your own people suddenly you may be reading about it in the last couple of week a new thing india is having slavery one big issue it is going to become in the next couple of years everybody is talking about slavery suddenly earlier it used to be caste then caste discrimination and other thing now the whole thing has been converted into slavery somebody sits in uh, you, uh, you know uh, us or uk and uh, invent this term and everybody is using it including our own local newspapers and other this is another terminological terrorism we have to be careful about it now what do these uh, groups do the huge amount of savings comes out of the households in india we save in the order of something like uh, 30 to 38% plus minus sometime 32 sometime 36 and now of course a lot of uh, experts from us are telling you are saving too much earlier the same fellows were telling you are not saving anything so now there was a seminar organized in washington i was also invited very interesting how to make indian women spend more money <laughs> that was the topic of the seminar i told it's not going to be very easy <laughs> right it's not going to be they will visit all the shops and other thing and quietly come back that's all they will do <laughs> our saving is 32% you should remember one important thing 80% of the saving comes from household from the household this fdi and fii put together because fdi and fii everybody talks about i think he also knows about it early morning like uh, 
uh, you know what is that called uh, or vishnu sagasra naam or uh, you know early morning everybody says fdi fii fdi fii every day believe me sir put together their share in indian investment is less than 7% less than 7% 93% of the investment comes from the saving of housewives the single important cause for our economic growth is ordinary housewives of this country take it from me the single major reason for the economic growth of our country is an average indian woman we must keep a statue of her from kottayam to kamrup one lady should be standing like this of course without a handbag so like this all over the country and she is below that we can write unknown woman but reason for our growth lot of american friends argue why do your people save so much mad people we have got average 13 credit cards per family we spend like nobody's business whom to tomb we are indebted based on credit card our birth is based on credit card our death is also based on so i tell them you look this is not going to come down anytime we don't have a general social security scheme in india unlike us or many european countries where at the time of retirement or getting a age you will get a check from government of the respective countries here don't think you will get any check or anything if at all they may ask you since you have become a <laughs> senior citizen kindly give us some money so there is no general social security that is one reason why and 85% of our people are self employed they are not employed in big companies or the, if you are a small shopkeeper at the end of your life you have to take care of yourself only not only your social security it is also health if he gets into a kidney or a heart problem he has to pay from his pocket unless you have been a government employee or a big company employee 85% of the people have to depend upon their own saving for the health reasons and now joint family is declining everybody knows at least in urban areas so there is all the more reason for you to be more concerned to save third reason is saving is not going to come down because every woman wants to save a lot for education of her children today ukg is more expensive than doing mba in my institute many of you may be knowing lkg and ukg are very expensive most expensive i was telling him the banks give loan for iit and iim not for ukg this is something very interesting <laughs> second and third floor you are allowed to build they will give money but not foundation <laughs> india is the only country where lower level you won't give money higher level yes yes we will so for that the woman has to save and every woman wants her child to go to the best school mother more than the father may not even know whether he goes to school or not <laughs> the mother knows and uh, i will tell you sir one top secret in asia and in india every mother wants her children to be better than her husband let us be <laughs> very this is a this is a basic fact <laughs> my american friends are shocked why simple sir that fellow cannot be rectified anymore he is a, he is like an ambassador car you know he is like an ambassador car which you can't repair which you can't sell which you can't just keep it like that get some new hyundai or some swifter so every woman want her children to be and want him to go to the best school on an average you can look around the mothers are the ones who monitor the education of the children on a continuous basis what is happening where is he going what is happening and the fourth reason is samskaras india it is very important the relatives death marriage birth all the thing you go and participate and spend money and kindly note important the lower the classes the more actively they participate my plumber carpenter immediately rush to the village when he comes to know somebody has died or somebody's marriage is and then he spends lot of money the better of people may not he may send an sms 
very sorry sir you have died and uh, no it's not a it, it won't even reach the fellow so samskaras are the fourth one last but not least everybody knows is the money for corruption womb to tomb we have to live with corruption birth certificate you have to pay and death certificate also you have to this is the for that also you have to say there is no you can't go to a bank and say sir i have to pay some corruption can i get some loan from you bank will say no sir you won't get it after you pay corruption we may give loan to you but not uh, before so all these five reasons are going to be with us for the next 20 years saving is not going to come down any time soon that is what the point i want to stress so that is the saving and what do they face their major problem of the non corporate is credit many of them borrow at phenomenal high interest rate believe me sir 2 to 5% per month nobody talks their annual rate annual rate are all for big corporates there they talk about monthly rate or sometime weekly rate that is the major concern of them and actually very few 10% is only covered in terms of institutional credit most of them borrow from friends community caste relatives chits nbfcs so many type of organizations they borrow and the smaller you are larger is the interest rate in india my flower vendor borrows around half a percent per day if you convert it it comes to 180% so the lower and lower you go larger and larger is the this is not the interest cost which uh, hindustan times summit he attended our friend the minister in the morning there the interest cost talked about is totally different there they talk about the difference between 10% and 11% per annum for large companies here we are talking about the actual so bank financing is not uh, and it has also come down very unfortunate 52% it used to be in the 90s today it is only on the order of 30% in spite of so much discussion and talk about inclusive growth and inclusive financing you can go to the next one so why are they in focus why nobody seems to be worried about them that is the main thing sir you are telling so much they are largest portion in gdp greatest portion in service sector largest share in exports largest share in saving but they are never in focus because most of them are dhoti clad first point they are not even wearing pants and no tie and in india is very important sorry for some of you you must have a tie to tell a lie so that is very very <laughs> important if you don't have a tie nobody respects you that is why you will find a chartered account and lawyers bankers all are with the ties only <laughs> these three groups which are flourishing in india today ca and lawyers are the two flourishing groups that shows about the dk of our society even though i belong to one of them so they are not uh, english speaking and they are what are called hmt type in the language of the youngsters hmt mean in the medium type they are not to be and they are mostly pan chewing they don't know even how to smoke a cigar or a properly a pipe and they are not media savvy if some of them are interviewed they will not be able to even tell what is their problem properly they will say that you know we are facing all these difficulties but if you have to have a real substantial amount of push for our economy first and foremost we must recognize them whether it is in the form of truckers 22 million trucks half of them are one one person one, one truck one owners or whether it is retail shop fellows or whether it is in the form of restaurants dabas or it is in the form of all self employed plumber carpenter fitter so this is the credit is the main issue for them they require to have credit at an appropriate rate so i have been arguing and suggesting like hdfc we must have a uh, this housing development finance similar to that 
small business also must have its own financing arm. It must have its own regulation. It must have its own mechanics of getting funds from the larger bodies. And uh, at obviously, you know, you, when we talk about 4 to 5 percent per month interest, obviously we know the ultimate consumer has to bear this. And uh, less regulation and more of encouragement. And that less regulation automatically, less corruption, mostly at the state level. I do not know how many of you would have ever ventured to see what is known as Shops and Establishment Act. There is an act like that. Every state has got running into 800 to 1,000 pages. My state, Karnataka, minister told me, minister himself told, if that act has to be strictly enforced, the entire shops in Karnataka has to be closed. I'm serious about it. Some of these are draconian act. There should not be any rat in your shop. How is it possible, sir? <laughs> and it should be so much area. Sunlight should be there. And uh, it should have a good surrounding. Every day morning, I go to buy my bread. Between the shop and me, there is a drainage, open drainage. I give money like that, and he jumps and gives the, <laughs> and I come home. That fellow has to be closed, actually. And there should be sitting space. Have you ever seen any small shop having what you call sitting space? Where you should be able to sit and... He doesn't have time for you when you are standing to talk to you. What I want to say is, we have enacted some of these laws, which are extraordinarily very good from the European or US point of view. We have copied them, actually. But we have to have a re-look at many of these acts. And so finally, what happened, one fellow comes, the shop fellow gives an envelope to him every Saturday as a regular ritual. This is how these uh, acts are implemented. There is something called a Food and Adulteration Act. There is a small idli dosa making hotel near me. Every week he gives 500 rupees to implement this act. Food and <laughs> Adulteration Act it is called. It's a very draconian act. He can ask the shop to close telling there is a fly in the Dosa or something. That's all. The owner tells, what else I can do, sir? You tell me. So these are, on an average, anywhere between 5 to 10 percent of the turnover of these small businesses is taken away by corruption. Turnover, not profits. And they don't have the wherewithal to fight. Big companies can create departments with the full of lawyers and chartered accountants to argue the case. All over the world. They can go to London and argue, they can, you know, what a phone, how much they are arguing. They have a battery of people. But these small people don't have the wherewithal. How do they? Sir, he said, I don't have any mechanism to deal with these things. So the only way I can do is to give some Dakshina. Why Dakshina? I asked him. He told, sir, you go to government in Karnataka. It is written there. Government work is God's work. Big board. In Canada also it is written. In Canada, those who know that, you know, Sarkar Kelsa, Devar Kelsa. Kelsa is work. You know. So for that, I have to pay that, you know, you know, whenever you want to interact with God, you have to pay. Very simple. So this man, he being in Bangalore, he argued with me like. But I feel that time has come, particularly for the new government, to sincerely focus on the travails of this group who are actually the engines of our economic growth who are mute, unsung, uncared. They carry on their own activities. They have been doing it for ages. Their expectations are very, very less. And they are not suited, booted, who come every day on television. They don't have any media grip even. But I feel genuinely time has come to recognize them, to minimize their issues. They don't, their expectations are very, very less. And uh, I am very confident with our uh, Mantriji here, this point would be taken care of by the current government. Thank you very much, sir.